I was like, holy fuck, it's 4.30. So <laughs> it's yeah. fine. We're we're going to go ahead and hook it up on Facebook now. So if anybody's seeing us, uh, we're running slightly, slightly behind, which is fine. We're just going to make sure that the live feed is here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and rock and roll in one second with our pre-show. And we'll jump right into our Urban Dictionary term of the night once we are live and once i do see the feed so here's the feed right here so ladies and gentlemen welcome to the happy hour podcast pre-game episode of course i'm ray tom nutty's with me um this is our pre-game episode author wendy cox she'll be joining us shortly um and uh man we're gonna get right into it we're gonna get right into our urban dictionary term of the night which our urban dictionary term of the night is goblin mood which is a variation of the cowgirl sexual position in which the person on top has their hands and feet planted onto the other person. It also involves grunting and occasionally maniacal laughing. And it said, heard you got lucky last night. Yeah, man. She went full goblin mode on me. It was wild. So just, (laughs) just imagine that like someone just full out going goblin mode on you in bed and all that. So of course we're right here live. And look, Ray's gone now, so this is my show. I'm going to take this for a minute, and I'm going to say uh, welcome to the Happy Hour Podcast. I'm here by myself right now, but Ray will be back. We're a little late getting into the game, so uh, that's my fault, because I was dealing with a scammer on Instagram who wanted me to send him Bitcoin, and it took me like 45 minutes, 45 minutes to talk him out of it, and it ended with me just sending him quotes from the notebook. So that's why I'm a little late and welcome back Ray to the happy hour podcast. (laughs) Yeah. I I had a bunch of stuff going on. And one thing that sucks with zoom is every so often it'll be like your live stream is being recorded and you have to hit. Okay. And I'm just sitting there like just scrolling through stuff. I hit the X and once you hit the X, it drops off. But the cool thing is, is we're already live. So you're in the room. So it just keeps on streaming along. But no, what uh, what was up? Because uh, you said you were running a little bit behind. So what, what went on with that? So like I have a monthly Zoom that's like just friends of mine from yeah, yeah. all around the country. It's not like a podcast or anything, but yeah. it's like five of us to get together once every, I mean, two weeks every month, something like that. Yeah, show each other, show and, you guys each other's nuts. Be like, hey, in case you haven't exactly. seen them in a while, here's my ball sack. Right. And we, we kiss sometimes and it's okay. But <laughs> while this was, while that Zoom was happening, I got a message from a Instagram scammer, which I thought would be fun oh. to play with. Nice. And I did for an hour. This guy was trying to sell me like Molly over Instagram. Okay. Nice. So it went on for like 40 minutes where I was just talking in code and it went back and forth. And I was sending him like, he asked me to send a, send him my uh, Bitcoin wallet information. And I was like, okay, cool. I have so much Bitcoin. I'll send you my wallet information. So I just Googled, I Googled Bitcoin wallet. Yeah. I sent him a screenshot and it went back and forth, back and forth. He called me on Instagram three times to which I put the microphone to the mic and I let everybody on the Zoom hear what was going on. And basically it was just a scammer. You know, I get this, yeah. but it ended with me just sending him quotes from the notebook about <laughs> like, I just want this. It's going to be hard, but we can do it. And I want uh. this every day. And blah 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 blah, and that was the last five minutes that I was late to the Zoom because nice. I couldn't, I couldn't just yeah. let that one you die. Couldn't just let I, this guy hang. Like that's right. the thing. Did you said, did you record that meeting? No, and I wish oh, I, I was, would have. Oh, dude, that would have been great if you would. I, did, I didn't know it was going to happen. I didn't know oh. what was going on. Dude, and then, like the like, second it started, you should have just hit record on Zoom and you could have went live on your Facebook and just kind of like how we do uh, fully fermented. You could have oh, yeah. talked a little bit about it and then just showed that shit. It, it's right it's up hilarious because like the guys that are on the Zoom with me, they're not comedians or anything like that. Like they're just my friends, right? Yeah. So yeah. I didn't want to just like jump into a live or a recorded thing. And I was like, God damn it. This would be <laughs> such gold anywhere yeah. else. But well, it, yeah. I, I saw something like that online one day. Somebody was uh, trying to screw some guy and like the guy, he actually fucks with these scammers. Like he goes and he, he hunts out all these scammers and uh, he'll like sit there and like, he'll go to transfer the money to the guy. And then what he'll do is he'll transfer it to himself. And like this guy was losing his mind. He's like, no, no, you're supposed to transfer to me. No, like just losing his shit. Like, Like I said, this was a 40 minute ordeal. So he sent me like his information 
And I just kept messaging him back, be like, it won't let me send it. And then I got to the point where I was like, bro, I have three NFTs. I should be able to send you money. And he was like, and that's when he would call me and be yeah. like, I don't know what's going on. This is what we need to do. It was wild for 45 minutes. So I apologize for being late, but it oh, was no, no, it. no, 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 man. You're, you're, you're good. I was like, shit, I hope Tom's not dead somewhere. Like Jesus. Like, no, I was know. just fighting the good fight. And also <laughs> at one point, at one point he asked where I was from. And I said, I'll give you a hint. We dominate the Olympics in curling. And then I just wrote USA, USA. And, he was, <laughs> and then he was like, are you a cop, bro? And I was like, oh my God. This, yes, and, actually and, I am. <laughs> bro, it just went, it went on for so long. It was unbearable, but I oh couldn't stop. I just, you you should have told him. Is. You should have told him that you were a member of the Yakuza. And and in case anybody Uh, watching live doesn't know, make sure you check out our latest fully fermented Redux episode from uh, which features Sonny Sandoval in their interview from uh, Happy Hour TV way back when. But we were talking about you going into you know karaoke bar and meeting the Yakuza, and that's what you should have been like. Oh, I'm a part of the Yakuza, you know. And uh, you should have kept those guys on speed dial. Then that way you could have just dialed those guys and three weighed into them. And be like, hey, man, they're, they're like, dude, there's so many scan. Like, I don't know how many times I will get an email from fucking Amazon or Home Depot saying, congratulations, your order has been processed. And it's like, bitch, I didn't order anything. And Amazon, like my wife has the Amazon account. So how the fuck are you going to mess it? Like, like I automatically know, like, well, bitch, I know I didn't order the Amazon stuff because I don't even have an Amazon account in my name. So I think what it is, is they just sit there and they message, oh, your Amazon order has processed. Just thinking that you're going to think that you ordered something on Amazon. Meanwhile, it's under my wife's name. I don't even know the logins for Amazon stuff. I just have it on there and she logged me in. And whenever I need something, I just buy it. (laughs) Real, Real quick while we're talking, Ray, that same guy, I'll show you on there. I have two missed calls from him on Instagram since I stopped fucking with him. (laughs) And of course, our guest is coming in a little bit early. Hello, Wendy. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? How are you guys doing? We're we're talking about that. We were a little late starting the pre-show. And the reason why is uh, Tom was hung up. He was talking to some of his buddies that he's known for a long time via Zoom. And the scammer was trying to get him to send him money. So he was screwing with the scammer the entire time. And oh man, I yeah. gotta hear that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, I ended the conversation with I was just sending quotes from the movie The Notebook, where I was like, I just want you forever. This might be hard. Like I was just I was just sending and what did they say quotes. when you were saying it? Did they answer back or well when you hopped on? I was just well, look, I'll show you guys again. Look, he's calling right now. Uh, dude, oh dude, answer gosh. it. Answer, answer it right answer here live. It. If he answer called, it. he yeah, just ended it. it. He just ended it. If he oh, calls dude, if me he, back, if he, if he I'll called, put it on here. Yeah, if yes. he calls you, one hundred percent answer it, and <laughs> we we can just say, you know, welcome to uh, you know the Baltimore County Police Hotline. Um, this is Officer Chase. You know, how oh, can I, I be of assistance to you? <laughs> the problem is, I I can't answer it on the Zoom and on my phone at the same time. Gotcha. So gotcha. you guys can, I'll I'll answer it like that, but it's yeah. only gonna. They're only going to hear me. The joys <laughs> okay. of technology. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. we got so much. <laughs> I got to the point where I, he called me and I told him he wanted my Facebook information. And I said, well, I don't deal with Facebook because, you know, Mark Zuckerberg is a lizard. And that guy was like, <laughs> I get it. I get it. I understand. And I was like, oh, my God, this guy is 100 percent on board with this. Oh, dude, what you should do is you should have like in the time, like if he keeps bothering you, you should create a fake Facebook page and catfish the scammer. And Bro, then that way <laughs> I catfished the shit out of him for the last hour. Like he thought I was 100 percent on board with buying bulk drugs from this guy. Like, <laughs> I'll send you the screenshots at what? Can I share my screen on here? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Here, yeah, let me yeah. hit. Uh, like, w- will it work or? Uh, yeah, multiple participants. So I, I set it on multiple participants. So if you hit screen share, you okay. just go ahead through it and I'll let you select your file because right. it, it was default. Do you want me to share the screen or do you want me to answer the call first? Uh, yes. Whatever you want to do, man. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. I'm doing good, man. How are you? 
Nah, how good. Listen up. You told me you're not on Facebook, but you're on Facebook. What's going on? I, d I don't have Facebook. I don't use that at all. <laughs> oh, and that's the call ended. That's been the last <laughs> hour of my life, Ray. Oh, my word. All right, Does this so happen I... to you often, Tom? No, this was a good one. So <laughs> can I share the I'll share the screen real quick? Yeah, yeah. I, right. I, I wish that we I wish that the show was we were at the level to where we had a studio because I would totally tell you to have each one of us answer him every time he would call. Like oh my god, it'd be you, then it would be That'd me, be and then Wendy would answer. And sure. like he'd be talking to different people and he'd be like, What the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Oh my god. Oh, I gotta oh. get my spectacles on for this. I can't see. Are you are you seeing it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> for some reason, it's only going back to 424. I don't know why. <laughs> but anyway, this is like after three phone calls, and he was telling me how trustworthy he was. So I was like, yeah. listen, I trust you. You got a voice that says legit. He called me. <laughs> and then I was like, I'll let you, you know. After the phone calls, like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> you so naughty. You don't love it's... me or this thick ass pussy, you know. Enjoy Ukraine. Ukraine, you're in Ukraine. Shut up, Tommy. Right. You <laughs> and then he tried to call me again. I didn't answer it. And that's when I hit him with the we dominate the curling. Yeah. <laughs> and then oh, he called dude. me again. I didn't answer. <laughs> and that's when I started hitting him with the notebook. This is the scene in the notebook. <laughs> oh. I love the notebook. I love it. That's great. And, and, and dude, right after I said every day is when I hopped on here. So oh, okay. Nice. Nice. Well, what's funny is that like those scammers, dude, they're so fucking determined. Like they oh will literally God. they will yeah. jump through so many hoops They'll just do all kinds uh, of stuff. You know, like, I love it when they call about the car's extended warranty. And, like, I always answer. Because what I'll do is if I'm in the car by myself, like, I'll turn around, I'll act like I'm screaming at my kids. Like, they'll be like, hi, this is such and such. Fun. I'll be like, hey, what did I tell you? Sit down and shut the fuck up or else I'm going to smack the shit out of you. And then they hang up right. instantly or whatever. And it's just kind of like. Yeah. Right. At one point in this conversation, I could hear people in the background of his phone call. And I was like, is that your family? I said, you tell him Uncle Tom said hi. And this guy, this guy literally said, Hey, Uncle Tom says hi. And then he hung up the phone. Like it was ridiculous. Oh my goodness. <laughs> little did he little did he know he was saying Uncle Tom says right. hello. <laughs> Bro, he got the wrong one. He got the wrong one today, you know. He and, thought and it you, was gonna be somebody just normal. It was me, sadly. And, and, and dude, here, here's the thing: like your legit last name is Nutty. Like he doesn't yeah. sit there like and like I didn't know your legit last name was Nutty. I thought it was a gimmick name when no. we first met. And like he's just sitting there, like you know, just oh, Mr. Nutty, paging Mr. Nutty, paging. Right. Mr. Nutty. Like no, my husband, my husband's got that name beat. You'll never guess what his first name is. What's that? His first name. His first name. So my oh. last name is pronounced like the soda. Okay. Which one? Like Coke. Like Coke. Coke. Okay. I, but, I was, I was going to ask. I was right, going to ask. Everyone pronounces it, you know, well, not everyone, but a lot of people pronounce it like cock. Yeah. And my husband's <laughs> first name is Woody. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm someone kidding. mispronounces that his name is Woody Cock. <laughs> they always mispronounce his name. He's uh, like downstairs shaking his head right now. He's like, oh my God, don't help me. <laughs> the principal at my high school. His name was Richard Harden, and I'll oh. let you guys figure out the rest. Dick Harden. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's funny because, like, Wendy, I hear you because my last name is Chase. You can see it's spelled C-H-A-C-E, and everybody gets so blundered with it. They put C-H-A-S-E, or I get Chance, or I get Chow, or... Yeah, you know, I can just see where they'd say Chance without the N, I got. That's yeah, scratch, yeah. Scratch, but, and, Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because it's like with that, it's like the legit way of saying it, ch ace, chase, like you hear the ace. And well, it, I think what know. throws people off is it should be an S instead of a C yeah. there, you know? Yeah. Before, so, before I, I actually ever talked to Ray, I thought it was Ray Chance, like <laughs> no bullshit. And then like I started like looking into it. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. Well, it, it's, it's funny because my wrestling name was Chase Rawlings. So, you know, I That's would go someplace. Me. 
and I would have to write on the call sheet or whatever, you know, whatever for the announcer. I would have to spell it out C H A S E because if not, I would come down to the ring and they'd be like, coming down to the ring, up. Chance Rawlings. I'd be like, I am not Chance Rawlings. I am Chase Rawlings, but thank you. So I'm going to, and now my wife has taken over, you know, the curse of having the last name spelled different ways. But of course her, her original last name was Gumanick. So imagine the, the stuff that she dealt with, you know, with her last name, Gumanick, you know, all that stuff. Like, well, yeah. my maiden name was horrible too long and horrible turnbull <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah so i got called turdball all the time yeah that was fun yeah and actually i was going to ask you with the last name if you've ever had anybody you know oh all the time it was horrible i mean the way growing up in the 70s and 80s oh my gosh relentless horrible nice, nice. and and tom at any point I am giving you 100% permission. If this guy calls you back at any point during the podcast, you can answer him during the, the episode <laughs> live on Facebook. And, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll instantly go silent. It, it, whatever you can do to keep on stringing this guy along because we need to have video evidence. I wish you would have recorded that. Yeah, we, we want him to call back now. Yeah, Definitely. I wish he would yeah. have called. I wish I would have recorded this. But yeah. like I said, it was like a we do a friends chat on Zoom once a month and it's it's not recorded it's a bunch of guys like us that we don't want to record it you know what i mean yeah. so when this all started it was like holy shit what's happening <laughs> i mean that's the thing i like that's just kind of like uh matt like me matt and some of our buddies they were all on the uh the thanksgiving episode we did the friendsgiving episode we do that every so often we'll have a phone call and it's kind of thing i think you know this is the kind of stuff that we talk about that you know we shouldn't but then also that's how this podcast came to be too because it's just kind of like all right we're all just going to sit around have some drinks and just talk about unnecessary stuff and that's fun you know, how long yeah. have you had your podcast uh let's see what is it may 7th will be our 100th episode so we started in june of 2020 june 12 okay. 2020 okay. was our first episode and I mean, it, it took off like wildfire. I mean, it, it's been pretty cool. I mean, we've had a lot of cool guests on. I mean, you you research the show. Everybody does research on the show. Yep. And it's funny because when people do the research, they, they either get a really vulgar episode or they get like a really like kind of like, you know, normal episode. So I it watched, just depends on the guest. <laughs> well, I had um, a couple of your guests uh, was on my show, Sherry Nelson. Yeah. Wendy oh, yeah. Stewart. So just wonderful great people love them um yeah i did watch the show uh with the lady with the cat house oh okay yeah that, 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 yeah, that yeah. was very interesting oh my yeah. gosh um you know i know about fetishes but yeah i mean what do they like do they like go to her house and they just dress up like cats and yeah that's the thing i'm, still, the I'm still what do they do i mean yeah i'm they, still they gotta, like, yeah they gotta they gotta ask the magician that was with her if they can be a part of it <laughs> and i mean she was cool as hell but i'm still kind of borderline yes. confused on exactly what it was and you know yeah. that's why i asked her i'm like is this on the same because furries like they they live that life like you know if you're dressed up like a siberian husky you're a I siberian didn't know husky. anything just... about that i was very oh interested yeah. i was like oh my goodness um yeah. yeah so and she has places like that all over the world i thought her yeah i, her I think that. i think what happens is like she goes places and then has these parties. She turns them into a cat house. Like right, you know, right, right. It's it's not yeah. like a, a permanent spot everywhere. Okay. I think it's more of like a wherever they're at is where they do this cat house thing. And that's cool. You know, kind of I mean? like but, a cat rave or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's like an <laughs> underground cat rave. Like, yeah, like like, like you you come in, like you walk in, they have bowls of milk there. You just crawl over, just drink yep. out of a saucer, and, and that, that guy in a vet, that guy in a vest is just like, Welcome to the cat house. Wow. <laughs> wow. Right, there's cat scratching posts and all, no no that's not the way it really i i don't know i'm just making well, up off the top of my head because i'm an know. idiot <laughs> yeah. but, uh, what we're what we're going to do is we're going to conclude our pre-show here on facebook live of course we're going to keep on uh, rolling along we're going to start our regular audio episode which will play on all major podcast platforms and of course this is an extended version right here on facebook live and of course right here on youtube make sure you click the subscribe button subscribe to all the content for the happy hour podcast so we're going to get right into it ladies and gentlemen welcome to the happy hour podcast of course i'm ray tom nutty is right here with me tonight and we're being joined by our very special guest 
author Wendy Koch. How you doing, Wendy? What's going on? I'm wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. It's um, an honor to be here. <laughs> and and uh, of course, you joined us a little bit early on our pre-show. Make sure everybody yep. hop over to YouTube, you know, Facebook, whatever. We always come on a little bit early. And uh, you joined in a little bit of the shenanigans. Tom was running a little bit behind. I thought Tom might have been dead because I didn't hear anything from him <laughs> for a while. And uh, he's messing with a scammer. And he actually had the scammer call him a little I bit hope ago. He calls him back. During oh this yeah. Time. So at any point, if we happen to go silent, it's because the scammer is calling Tom, and this scammer has been trying to work Tom over like the whole entire time. And so if he calls back, we'll go right to that. Now, Wendy, of course, you have a couple of novels out, you know, a couple of books. And how how was it like? I mean, with writing books and all that, because I mean, I don't I don't have the attention span. <laughs> for doing something like that. And I mean, if I were to write a book, I'd probably write like an autobiography type book, but then I'd be sitting there for hours thinking to myself, do I leave the incriminating stuff in here or not? And I mean, I'd probably go with it because I talk about all that shit on here anyways, but yeah, you, know, you, would, you would want that, the, that that's the good stuff. You yeah, would absolutely yeah. <laughs> want to have that in your book if you ever did a biography, but um, yeah, I, um, you know, I've always loved to write. I wanted to write even when I was a little girl. Um, you know, I grew up in a small northern town in Wisconsin, about three hours north of Milwaukee. And, you know, my parents had a wonderful resort. They, it was on a lake. You know, we had a pool. We had like eight cabins. I didn't realize then how good we had it, right? Um, <laughs> and it was just a wonderful time it was just a very interesting time to grow up. It was during the 70s and 80s. And, you know, my parents were very giving people, you know, um, people would come to stay. And um, my dad, they would have these parties. They would have these huge parties. And, you know, people that would come stay there, you know, they would attend. People from in town would get wind about these parties. They would come. Neighbors would come. I'd be a little girl bumping into all these people like, oh, my gosh, and nice, just nice. notice what a cool atmosphere it really was. And, you know, in addition to that, um, there were some paranormal things that happened on the really? resort. Yeah, so I thought that would make a great premise for the book, A Gray okay. Resort. So, um, yeah, it took, um, it took a while to write because I do have two sets of twins. Um, they're all in high school right now. So... Um, they took up quite a lot of my time, but um, <laughs> during, yeah, the throes of parenting and diaper changing and blah, 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 you know, I just like, you know, I need to get back into writing. I need to do something for myself. And it took eight years to write. Um, I didn't know anybody in the publishing arena. I didn't know anybody in publishing at all. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't, uh, I had a lot of things happen um, that I almost didn't think the book was going to get published. You know, half my manuscript yeah. was lost. I had um, a lot of different issues. I didn't know how it worked with Amazon. It was just a lot of um, yeah. things that had to come together. And, um, you know, but I broke through all that because I really, really, I'm like, okay, I'm getting this published no matter <laughs> what. When the, like, the third thing happened, I'm like, no, I'm, eventually I'm going to get it out there. And um, it did. A Grey Resort came out in summer of 2019. And really, um, my life has not been the same since then. Um, it was my first book signing was just absolutely amazing. I'll never really yeah. okay. Uh, where where did you do the book signing at? My my first book signing was at three one seven Coffee, just down the street. Really great place. Um, I love that place. And they decided, yeah, we'll we'll host you. We'll have you there. And you know, basically, it was just it was during the summer, and um, my fan, friends and family came, and it was just great. And there was like a line of people and, you know, <laughs> oh, will you sign it? And, um, you know, some people that I didn't know happened to stop in there. And nice. it was just, it was wonderful. It was great. And, you know, since then I've had several book signings, but I'll never forget that first one. It was amazing. Nice. And, and of course you also have a, an awakening, right? Yes. As well. Yep. Too. Now, yep. now well, with, with Gray Resort is, is a lot of that based off of the paranormal experiences you were talking about at the yeah right there with the is it did you yeah. use is that a raven on the front or a crow because i know um, they're very similar and they are like very si similar a crow yeah crow. But okay you know what? it you, could be a raven too yeah <laughs> I, i'll call it a raven for you <laughs> yeah that, that well that that's the whole thing of course you know we're right here in baltimore and, and it's like you know you get some of these big ass crows sometimes 
and oh, then yeah. it's like you know we have Ra- you know those ravens too you sit yeah. there like i start and I look at them like sometimes i'm like I, is that a raven or is that a crow what what is looking at me right now like i don't just, to be really yeah. honest i don't know quite what the difference might be i mean i'll have yeah. to, i could google it and find out real no, quick you know what's him, funny but... is is you can see a big ass crow and wonder if it's a raven but when you see a raven you're like oh no doubt yeah. that's a raven yeah you know no doubt. like that thing is going <laughs> to kill me right now right exactly <laughs> like you see the crows and you're like oh that could be a raven, but when you see yeah. a real raven, you're like, oh no. Yeah. No, those there's fucking a, crows there's aren't a lot shit. more. <laughs> yeah, there seems to be a lot more crows out there. I don't see yeah. too many well, ravens. It, it's funny because like this is something to me, Matt. I, you know, Matt, he kind of joined us tonight, but uh we talked about this one of our early episodes, I think episode eight or episode nine, is that birds don't forget faces, especially like because we found out seagulls don't never forget a face. And okay. birds are, you know, just a lot of birds in general are like that. They remember that kind of stuff. And like seagulls will actually program themselves to like mimic humans, like they'll stamp their feet or whatever and all that. And like seagulls are insane animals as it is they'll swallow a hot dog hole though they've eaten rabbits like they're just absolutely insane um but with uh with gray resort with that yeah. how how much uh, i guess of the paranormal stuff was triggered into that was a lot of that based off of that house when you when you did the novel and if so how much of it was actually with that and did you you know fictionalize some of the stuff as well well i'll tell you the the beginning was true the beginning part really happened to me so um so when I was a young girl, I felt like, um, well, I know that I had sort of a sixth sense where I would know when things yeah. were going to happen before they happened. Um, just call it intuition. I feel like everybody has that sort of um, deep intuition, and some people just are kind of scared and don't kind of close themselves off to it. But as a young girl, I really didn't know where it was coming from, and I, and I knew things before. I really shouldn't know some of the things that happened. Okay. Um, and I'll just say some one thing, okay, because it's in the beginning of the book. Here, I'll, this is what it looks like. Um, and it's funny because it, look ju- it looks just like, um, you know, when we're, like, fishing on a dock off the resort. Okay. I mean, they got, so so is, that, is that right outside? The ha- I guess, like, if you were to walk out the house, is that what you would see exactly. is the pier and the yeah, water yeah. overlook? Yeah, our house was, like, you know, 50 feet from the water. And there was wow. three docks, and we had a lot of rowboats and things. But, yeah, so in the beginning of the book, Um, so I was really close to my grandparents. My parents had bought the resort for my grandparents. And, um, during this time, my grandparents were getting ready to go for a trip to Florida. And, um, I was really close to my grandmother. I was about six or seven years old. And, you know, um, they were just kind of sitting around. Yeah, we're going to leave next week for Florida. And, you know, I'll bring you back some shells, honey, and stuff. And I'm like, no, I, I I just, I, I had a really strong feeling that if she were to go to Florida, um, you know, she would die. She would not come back. Oh, wow. You know? Yeah. And it, it was a very strong feeling. I didn't know where it came from. And, um, you know, as she was saying, yeah, I'll bring you some shells. And I just like, you know, I was just going to like say it out loud because I thought maybe if I could change her mind, she wouldn't go. And then yeah, I almost like a final destination yeah. type thing. Yeah. 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 So I said, um, no, grandma, if you go over there, uh, you're going to die over there. And I just kind of blurted that out as a little kid. Wow. And my mom was there and she, they, she looked at me and my grandfather, he was like, what are you saying? You know, this is just, you know, some kid with a wild imagination. They could, I mean, my mom was mortified and, but, um, it, so they went, they ended, you know, they didn't listen to me, of course, you know, just a little kid, you know, what do they know? But, um, <laughs> yeah, so they went there and, uh, she, she passed away. She got hit by a drunk driver and was killed. Oh my oh, God. Shit. Yeah. So that was a long time ago, but that, you know, as you're growing up and, you know, you're experiencing that sort of thing. So I was, um, I couldn't believe it, you know, and I didn't know where that came from. And I had things consistently, not like that, but other things with other people um, that I knew that something was going to happen to him before it did. And I didn't know where it came from. And I thought I was a bad kid and I wasn't a bad kid, but... Yeah. Now, do you still have some of that now? Is that I something close, that- I tur- you know what? I kind of closed off on that because it got to be very overwhelming. But, um, you know, over the past year and a half or so, I've been on a lot of different podcasts and things, and I feel like the door is kind of opening up again if I want it to. Yeah. You know? Um, I don't know. Uh, I've just kind of been busy with life, um, doing my own thing. But as I'm, like, getting back into, you know, I just finished book two, and I'm yeah. getting more into that. 
I feel like if I wanted to, I could probably open the door back up on that. I don't know, you know, because it's kind of overwhelming. And yeah, you know, I, I feel like it's one of those things where you just you walk up and it's like when you first met your husband, like you walk up and you're like, you know, you're going to be married to me in a year, right? Like <laughs> it, the first time you meet him, it's just like, look, we're gonna going to get married. Like, yeah, you just you don't know it yet. You know, we don't know each other yet. But in a few months, we're going to meet each other and we're going to get married. Like, you know, it, it, it's it's crazy how a lot of that stuff works, like the it stuff is. that you see and the stuff that goes on. It, it, it makes you, you know, I've always been at my wife's not really too much of a big she's more of a seeing as believing type person. Me, I've always like I've had paranormal experiences. I, have you know, oh, I've really seen weird stuff. But I, you know, I, I've always had the whole, there's got to be more than just us mentality out there. Absolutely. There's got to be something else. Like, you know, there has to be. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Like, like what you said with your wife, like my husband, he's very analytical. He's very, he, he doesn't believe in that stuff at all. And that's cool. I mean, we balance each other out, but he doesn't really, you know, um, so when he has come up, you know, we haven't gone to the resort in a long time and, you know, my parents don't own it anymore. In fact, my dad has passed on and things. Um, it's been several years um but when we go up there to see the resort um you know even my husband will say you know there is there is a eerie feeling i can't put my finger on it and where where's it at where where's the resort exactly it's it's um in tomahawk wisconsin and Uh, and um it's about four hours north of milwaukee but in the book i changed the name to nielsville i just okay yeah Yeah. now with that have you guys ever with that resort have you ever felt like you've ever had like a presence of like a Bigfoot or anything with that we resort? Heard, we heard some really strange noises across. So there was this huge tree farm, tree farm, um, excuse me, across the street. And there's, you know, lots of woods, lots, lots of acreage. And, uh, you know, sometimes we would walk around this road. It was called the Horseshoe. And I call it Pony Road in a gray resort. But, you know, a group of us would walk around it and we heard some crazy stuff. I, tw- you know, I parent, you know, um, people would come up to my parents that were staying on the resort and they're like, what is that noise? Yeah. And my mom would just be like, oh, you know, I don't know. It's probably a bear, you know, or a deer or whatever. It, it's okay, though. It's, it's always a bear or a deer. It's always yeah, blame. Bear or like, deer, like, what about know, the whatever. poor bears that are just kind of like, why are they? It's almost like a horror movie when someone says somebody else's name and it's really Jason standing in the closet <laughs> ready to like cut your head off with a machete. And it's like, I'm not I'm not Tom. I'm here to kill you. <laughs> like, stop saying that name. <laughs> it was strange, though. It, it sounded very... Um, it, like a cackling witch, like a prehistoric tiger. Sometimes I know it sounds very strange. That, that might have been a that might have been a Wendigo. That, I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. That yes, might have been a yeah. Wendigo. Do you believe I, in all that? Oh, I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. My my whole my wife her TikTok is dogs and Taylor Swift. My TikTok <laughs> is thrifting because I'm a reseller horror and uh, like supernatural type. Okay, stuff. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It was not, it, whatever it was, it didn't seem like it was of this earth or like a, oh, a yeah. normal animal. It really didn't. Um, and I was hoping my mom would hear it. And she heard it one time because our mailbox was way down at the end of the road. And I did, she had, she was over in the corner. I didn't, and I was checking the mail and I heard it. And I'm like, oh, where is she? And she, was, she goes, is that what you're talking about? I go, yes. She goes, that yeah. is very strange. Yeah, you um, hear it and you turn around and your mom's just like, a, a Bigfoot at that point, and you're just going, oh no, oh no, all this time, all this time, I've been lied to. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and when people from the resort would say there's some strange noise, and we're like, it's okay. It kind of added to the, you know, the fun sort of chaos out of, of it. Yeah, you know? yeah. People weren't really scared, but I would never feel comfortable like walking alone, uh, you know, around that road. Or out in the- no, absolutely yeah. not. I, I did with, it would always be with a group of people. Well, yeah. me and my wife, we went to uh, Asheville, North Carolina. I loved it. It was all mountains. So we're, we're out, we're out in the mountains the whole time. We did a skyline drive on the way up there. And at one point, I can't remember if it was Blue Ridge. I think it was Blue Ridge Parkway when we were up in the mountains, Blue Ridge Parkways, but all of them have like all these overlooks. And at one point I have a video, I got to find the video. I have it on my phone somewhere, but at one point, like I'm just shooting video and it sounds like like down deep, deep down in the forest. It sounds like there's a dog barking. I looked at my wife and I'm like, that's weird. Like why would just a random dog. One random dog be barking. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. And I sat there and I thought about it. I'm like, well, a lot of times, a lot of the videos that I watch is people say that normally a Wendigo will, you know, it imitate something 
that will like mm-hmm. like imitate sounds of crying baby or like a dog or like a wounded animal or something like that yep. to lure you over to where it is and i that's what i thought about i'm like i'm like now like no way but it, it was just it was weird and just seeing yeah. nothing but like forest you know over yeah. that overlook i'm just kind of like there could be anything down there i could fall down this <laughs> embankment right now and people would not find me for years just because Scary. of how vast yeah. that forest Yeah, it gets is. very thick. Like, and yeah, you don't want to get lost out in there. No, absolutely not. Yeah. And how uh, how's uh, how's snow out that way? Like, did you guys ever go out there like when it was snowing? And Yeah. Um, you know, um, my sister and I would like snow ski. We'd cross country ski out in the tree farm. We didn't really have that. We weren't really scared. I don't know. It was... Um, I mean, we'd go right in there. And I remember thinking back, like, God, we, you know, my sister and I would, like, walk on in the woods and the trails during the day, you know, <laughs> at night, not so much. But yeah. um, we did that quite a lot. Um, I just wasn't really all that scared. I don't know. I just felt like nothing. But it, there's that whole area, that whole surrounding area, I would say about, uh, you know, 10 miles all around, there is something quite strange. I mean, my mom... When she was younger, she had saw a UFO in that area. Really? Well, yeah, she did. And she's, you know, I mean, I believe her. She's not going to lie about something like that. She yeah. was, um, it was when my dad was in Vietnam and, <clears throat> excuse me, she was just, you know, I don't know. She just took a drive and she stopped over and she was watching the deer and just kind of passing the time. And um, it was, you know, in the middle of, I don't know, it was dark. And at first she thought it was a car coming. It was a light. But then, you know, she was watching it, and the li- it wasn't a light anymore. It was a machine. And she could not believe what she was seeing. It was, it was like, it, you know, hung over, like, um, this field. And she was watching it, and it wasn't, you know, it's not a plane. She knows what a plane looks like. It's not a helicopter. It's like, you know, yeah. a UFO. It looks just like what you think it, you know, like with the lights yeah. all around it. And she was so scared. It, it, as soon as it, la- it landed... And she got out of there and she got so shook up that um, she went and got my grandma and said, I I don't know what I saw, drove her back to the spot. And of course it was gone, but you know, she was really, you know, um, scared. Um, So she called the police and the police said that they had many, many phone calls about um, what, you know, they saw that night. So, and they didn't know what it was and they're like, well, you know, okay, we'll write it down and report or whatever, but. What that was do? big. It, what she saw is she saw Bigfoot's Uber. That's what she saw. Like you know, the aliens know more than we do. So you know, they, they have an Uber they system. Do. And when Bigfoot needs to get around, it's like you know, someone's about to discover Bigfoot. He just whistles, and <laughs> UFO just shows up, beam him up, boom, off he they whistle, go. Whistle. He and, throws rocks too. Don't forget that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, a, no, go ahead. No, no. What was that? I was going to say, I've had a couple of people on my show, actually, that had um, a UFO alien experience. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Very exciting. And I believe them, too. I nice. Do. And that's a good transition, because I was just getting ready to ask you about your podcast. You know, tell us a little bit about that, you know, as well, along with, you know, your, your writing, your books. You know, you also have a podcast as well. Yeah, it's called the Juicy Pear Podcast with Wendy. And really, it was something that um, I really wanted to just do something fun because it was just, you know, it was during the pandemic, right in the middle of it. You know, it's just this heaviness all around, you know, this big, huge gray cloud that just would not leave. And I was (laughs) sick of it, you know. I'm like, I, you know, my my friend Sean and I, we started it in the beginning and she's moved on and that's perfectly fine. She's um, doing other things. But, um, you know, we're just creative people and we wanted to do something fun and uplifting, tired of seeing the negativity on the no- news every incessantly every day. It was always something new. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm tired of this. Yeah. I'm tired of the politics. I'm tired of all that crap. I want to do something fun. I want to have creatives on the show and I want to have people on that um, have overcome obstacles and just have fun. And it started in uh, November of 20 was our first episode and i believe what 50 the 59th episode will be out uh tomorrow and it's been so much fun um i have authors on actors oh my gosh uh sing musical you know people singers uh psychics ghost hunters um, entrepreneurs so you you, you have a lot of guests like we do like we have a variety of guests every week 
you know, yeah. of course, you know, we said, and it's funny because like, you know, my old show, we always had adult film stars. Like everybody, you know, everybody has this whole, you know, tap, you know, they, they think it's just kind of weird, you know, with that. And I'm just kind of like, well, you know, there are people too, they have fun stories. And I mean, yeah, you know, we let loose and, you know, joke about that kind of stuff anyways. And it's like, hey, humor you know, goes a long way. Yeah. You know, no one has it anymore. Yeah. It, it's like, it's dead. <laughs> I don't know how comedians are doing it because everybody's oh, offended yeah. by everything. Oh, Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, and how's that work? <laughs> yeah, Tom does. Uh, Tom does stand up. So you know okay. that that's the whole thing. It's like you know, but now they're entering a world where you have like virtual, you know, comedy shows and all that too. And you know, you just have to be. You have to like tread around. It's like you know, guys like George Carlin. They they yep. want to. There's no way a George Carlin would be around today. There's no way no. a Richard Pryor would be around today. No. There's no way Andrew Dice Clay will be around yeah. today. But or they also Eddie Murphy get, too. I mean. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. they also want to give a shit either. You know, that's the whole thing. You know, they right. just be like, oh, whatever. Like, I, I think that's what uh, the world's missing is the people who don't give a shit. Right. You know, it's like we got so many people that are so concerned about what the next person thinks. Like, yeah, I did. I did two shows over the weekend with um, Eric Woodworth, Ashley Pontius, both friends of the podcast, you know, and it was like nobody cared. Like it was it was good old fashioned like last night we did a brewery in waynesboro pa shout out rough edges but it was like probably 130 people and i'm telling you like that that crowd was there for it they didn't care that's awesome nobody was there a... to be upset or anything like it was yeah. just a good fucking time that must know? have been a great feeling for you Oh yeah. How long yeah. has it been since you really had a connection like that with an or even the opportunity because with all this restrictions and everything, you know? Well, it's it, it's it's been a slow like 2 years for sure, but like we're getting back into it and like like I said I did shows Friday night, Saturday night with the same group of people and in totally different parts of the world. Like we did Elkton, Maryland and then Waynesboro, PA, which are like almost three and a half hours apart. Mm -hmm. And like it was the same vibe and it's like that's when you realize that like all right people are just Getting here down. to yeah. just have fun and Cut do loose shit and have again fun. exactly Do it once have fun yes. have a little bit of fun it's okay exactly. you can laugh yep, yep. Yeah. and, and we had a lot of that yeah i think the scariest thing in the world would be a stand up comedian to have to get up there and get everybody i think that would be one of the I, oh my I, kudos to you i could never do that Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, with uh, I did pro wrestling and I did some, like, I did a couple of shows right as COVID was happening. And we had to do it, you know, at the wrestling school, no crowd. And it's, it's the weirdest thing because, you know, and I'm sure Tom knows too, is a lot of times the reaction from the crowd, you thrive off that. Oh, like, yeah. You, know, you thrive on that better. energy. You know, yeah. That yeah. helps you. Yeah. I always, I would always tell fans, I'm like, you know, here's the thing the louder you are and the more into it you are, the harder we're going to work. It's the kind yeah. of thing that if we go out there and we're doing our stuff and you're quiet, we're going to wrap up our match and we're going to go in the back because the crowd's dead. We've lost yeah. you, whatever, yeah. Yeah. you know, and you know, it's the kind of thing that if you're into it and you're like, Hey, you suck, you know, and I turn around and go, no, your mother sucks or whatever. It's like, you know, at that point, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're interacting, you know, you're a part of the show at that and, point. And that, that was the great thing about this, the Friday, Saturday shows we did is like, the, like I said, the crowd was there for it. Like they didn't, Nobody was there to judge anything. Everybody, it was, you could, you could, you know, tap the energy in those rooms. And that makes for a great show for everybody involved, you know, yeah. like us and the crowd, everybody's feeding off the same vibe. And it, it just, it was so nice to be around people that want to have fun again, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's been too I, long. What I'm going to do real quick is there was a video that I saw that my wife sent me. And I'm going to share that real quick. If I can get it pulled up real quick. And I want you guys to give me your reactions to that. Once I get it pulled up, I just need to find it real quick. So let me go on over to here. So, all right. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and open this. And then you guys let me know what you think of this video. Once it plays, my wife sent me this. And uh, let me get this on a full screen. What? Are those hot dogs? Yes. Oh, they might be. Oh my god. That looks so familiar and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. All right. 
What the fuck are we watching? My, like, I, I saw this, and if you guys have ever seen GIF image of a girl with all the hot dogs hitting her in the face, yep. like, I, I literally feel like that this was the prequel to that. Like, what, I, what I would like to point out is that that video probably has millions of oh, views. Yeah. What, without question. That's, and that's, I just, I can't wrap my head around the science that gives that millions of views. Right. Right. Like, yeah. Like I, I know, know we all we all just watched it and we were like ha 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 ha. Okay, yeah. But like yeah. at the same point, it's like what in the fuck is going on? <laughs> you know? I mean that that's the thing. It's like that's the kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, I feel like like a moment like that, like that's something that you do when you're drunk with your buddies and you're just kind of right. like ah, let's shove all these hot dogs in the and like yeah, they're just like doing a hot it. dog cannon yeah. or whatever and all that. And it's like it, like I mean at that point, like now that's that dude's gimmick. If that thing got millions of views, you now need to figure out more things to do with hot dogs. Like you need to run out on like the highway shooting hot dogs at each other out of a bottle. Like that's, you know. I, I, do, I just, I don't think you get another viral video if that's the one you I got. Know, I can't believe they They're got millions like, of views. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like on TikTok, they do the whole thing. Post a video that made you famous. Like, just imagine it. Like that dude's like the hot dog squeezer. Like, right. you know, that that's you know, he's just it's sh- and just just you know the, the the best part for me, my favorite part of the video was him trying to shove the one hot dog down. It just kept on popping up, shoved it down, popped up. Like it's just it's prairie dogging in the bottle. Like, <laughs> and it's just kind of like. <laughs> I, I, I think the best part is that they got all the hot dogs in the bottle, and they were like, "What's the best thing we can do?" And yeah. then they just shot it into the sink. Yeah. Like you should have went in the living room and at least shot somebody else or something yeah. like that. Like I can't, I can't wrap my head around it. Right. I can't. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> thing. It's like, you know, do you go outside and like turn on the grill and like fire them uh, on the grill? Like, yes. I, I mean, yes. you know, it, it like that they, would add another element at least. I mean, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> do it, do it with cooked hot dogs and then you can fire them out and try to make them on the bun. You know, something yeah. like you know, <laughs> yes. make, make like the hot dog Olympics or something. I, I don't <laughs> understand some of these TikToks. I, you know, I, yeah. I got on it because they're like, you know, if you're trying to sell a book, get on TikTok. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm not sure if that's my demographic, but I'll go ahead and get yeah. on it. There are some really cool um, things that you can make like stories and all the effects and stuff on TikTok. Yeah. That is kind of neat. It, it is a little bit more than uh, Instagram. I feel yeah. I, I have a I have a TikTok for it for the show, and you know I've posted a lot of like really like gem clips on there yeah. from the show, and they don't really gain much traction. And it, it just after a while, I just kind of get yeah, annoyed yeah. with it. And I'm just kind of like, right. I'm not, you know, I'm not sharing anything else. Like I'm not doing anything remotely stupid. Like maybe if I like put my hand up on a table and cut it off <laughs> with a meat cleaver, like you know maybe that will get me some views. But then I don't have a hand, and you know. It, yeah, that, that I, might, you might run into some problems, you know. Yeah. Like it, it's funny you say that because like uh, I put on like Instagram reels all the time just of yeah. my stand up, you know what I mean? Little yeah. 20 second clips of my stand up and they get a little bit of traction, whatever. But the, the best video as far as views go that I have is literally just me filming a plate of I, I bought a swordfish steak and I cooked it and I hated it. Right. So all I did was film the plate and I was like, bro fuck swordfish and that's the whole video and that's got more views than anything i've ever views. everything i've ever worked at trying to get views that's that funny. video is like oh everybody loves this one yeah. i'm like what you weren't fuck? trying at all you weren't trying I, you just i don't get you know, it did something really random that's all yeah. it was i was like yeah. okay fuck swordfish and that random got a bunch of views <laughs> random I don't wins get the it. day <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't know i don't understand it because i i Sometimes we'll post something I try to on reels on Instagram and, um, you know, one almost got like 800 views. It was just real silly. I mean, I, I bought a cowboy hat and I liked the way it looked. I'm like, oh, I, I don't know. And then yeah. some of them you won't get but 30 views. And I don't know yeah. the algorithms. I don't, under, you know, I don't, well, that, I don't That's know. it too. Like, like with YouTube, YouTube's kind of the same way. Like yeah. it's, it's an algorithm. Like even if you put in every hashtag you can for like your description for the videos. Like we have, I have a video that has like 75,000 views. And then like some of that's them awesome. have like 30 and then some of them have 30,000. Like, and that, that's it. like our adult film star content that does amazing. That's the best content we have out of anything we have on here because a lot of people are too, you know, they, they're interested in, you know, yeah. sex sells. That's, yeah. that's a big yeah. thing. 
That's you know true. the world but it's just it's weird the way a lot of these algorithms work it with is, facebook it is. and well i know. made a um i made a trailer um of my book and it was on the clapper app i guess the clapper is some social media thing and um you know I, I'm on there, but I, I thought, okay, I'll go ahead and post it. And that thing got 50,000 views. Really? I've never yeah. heard of Clapper before. That's the first yeah, I've ever I hadn't heard, heard it either. My a fellow podcaster said- you said, said the Look. Clapper, I thought you meant like when you clap. Yeah, I know. Like, it's a weird that's name. A first, that's but exactly it's, where my mind went. <laughs> I know. Well, that's where my, my, my mind went too. And she's like, no, it's, this is a social media site. And I got on there and it's for creatives. And yeah. I'm like, okay. So I signed up and whatever. Um, but I could not believe it. 50,000 views. Wow. And they're, yeah. But- and then some are like 200, you know, it just depends. <laughs> I don't know. So it's like, I don't know. I, I, I try to get, put myself out there with my books. You know, I take a lot of time to write them and I want everyone to know yeah. about them. You know, I don't blame you. And uh, what I'm going to do real quick. So I'm going to get into our new featured beer. We have a new featured beer. I went out and grabbed something new this week. And uh, I've been looking for this for a while. And I finally found some of it. It's Yingling's Hershey's Chocolate. Porter which is infused mm. with Hershey's chocolate. Yeah. And it's amazing. I am downing them like crazy here. So shout out to Yangling, shout out to Hershey's Chocolate Porter. For those of you that may be under the age of 21, which I hope you are not because you probably should not be listening to this podcast if you are. It is not chocolate milk. I know there's an outcry for chocolate milk in elementary schools. I forgot where it was when the kids protested for chocolate milk, but this is not it. It is Hershey's Porter. It is alcohol. And it will do some amazing things to you. And uh, it sounds really also, good. Yeah. And also our featured shot, which actually is a wine that my wife gave me. So it actually ends up being a little bit more than a shot. And I always butcher this name. It's called Christ Kindle Glue Wine. And of course, it has like this whole, it was, it comes out around Christmas time. So, oh, yeah. Spiced wine from it's St. Lawrence. So shout out to them. This has been our featured shot, of course, coming off of a, uh, jack daniels winter cider so i'm gonna pour myself some of this and drink this and uh wendy what uh what are some of your go-tos do you drink if you do i love margaritas um i love margaritas on the rocks that's probably my favorite um every once in a while a martini is good um i'm, I'm not I'm gonna... go, ahead. go ahead no i'm not too much of a beer drinker i try i, I go kind of in phases uh i'm kind of like if i like beer i like more of the fruity light stuff but yeah. um, if I'm going to do a mixed drink, I, I love my tequila in rum. Nice. Yeah. We, me and my wife went to dinner last night before the show. Okay. And we went to an Applebee's because we are high class. Okay? Love Applebee's. <laughs> I love they, Applebee's. They have the new margarita that's like the Dwayne The Rock Johnson sponsored oh, margarita. I haven't yeah. been to Applebee's in a while, yes. but yeah. Oh, man. And she drank two of those things. And oh. I'm going to tell you right now. Two of them is more than you need to drink okay because <laughs> she was feeling good when but was, i will say it was a good drink it was a good drink yeah they when, when it was done did she there. smell what the rock was cooking like oh, you know? oh <laughs> she finished half of one and she was already a jabroni you know what i mean <laughs> did she get it on the rocks or slushy or what flavor no it, it came on the rocks with like the salt rim and everything that's and my it was, favorite it was yes. a it was a very beautiful presentation okay. but like she was taking pictures of it at the at the table you know how yeah. people do yeah. so me being the person that i am i put my bud light up and i started taking pictures of the bud light <laughs> just mocking her and the guy yeah. at the bar was like oh my god why are you taking pictures of the bud light and i was like you, you don't you don't get <laughs> how dare happening. you <laughs> right i was like what the fuck god but it was a good time and cool. then uh what we're going to do real quick is we're going to get in the burn photo so this is our segment that we've had the last couple of weeks and uh, we've all been busy. Of course, Tom was running a little bit late. Matt wasn't here. I pulled a photo of Matt anyways. So, you know, some of, some of the photos this week aren't quite as gems as what they normally are. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with mine because they always have really fun, interesting backstories. So let me get this back to here and I'm going to go ahead and share mine. So this is mine for this week for burn photo. And of course, you see, I'm wearing like a little pink whale on my head and you can see my old tag partner blood who's also a friend of the show um and this was the polar bear plunge and this was when they used to let us drink at the polar bear plunge so both of us are just shit canned right here and <laughs> i forgot the company that was giving out these whale hats but we all ended up with whale hats and it snowed they had a huge blizzard this year so 
it, it was a year when they had the blizzard and they canceled the second plunge. It was so bad. And they were filming Hot Tub Time Machine at that point there. Oh, cool. And they and they kept on saying, give it up for the crew of Hot Tub Time Machine. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there with my shirt off. I'm in just my swim trunks. We're waiting to plunge. They're breaking the ice up in the water before you run it. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about Hot Tub Time. I want to learn. It, it was the only plunge. I did it five years in a row where I said, screw it. I walked back into the heat of 10 because... <laughs> with how drunk I was. There is no way I would how, do something like, oh my oh, God, what a shock to the yeah. system. How do you do that and not have a oh, heart attack? I mean, has, yeah, I'm it, surprised no one has died doing that, to be honest yeah, with you. It, it's you gotta brutal. wear the pink hat. You gotta wear the yeah. pink hat. That's the only way. <laughs> you go to a whole different level, a whole different world, you know, when you're doing that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Tom's, which, which I pulled. I haven't all, even seen yet. I don't know what. Yeah, yeah he doesn't even yet. know what his own is. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let me uh, let me just go ahead and find uh, for some reason. So I'm gonna have to get out of this and uh, re pull up the share thing. So all right, so here we go. So share screen. So there we go. So this one right here. I just kind of laughed when I saw this because Tom just he doesn't look like where he knows where he is. <laughs> like that clearly look looks like, like and I could be wrong. Oh my yeah, word. That, that looks like Ravens Stadium, but he's totally not wearing, you know, a Ravens jersey. He's holding a Ravens beer in his hand. It looks like he's wearing, you know, a Saints jersey. So it's just kind of like the kind of thing that's Baltimore City. It's at the point where you're just kind of smiling because you know you're about to be murdered when nope. you leave the stadium. Nope. Ray, I'm going to let you know right now is that was a uh... – I'm a, I'm a big Saints fan. I've been a Saints fan my whole life, okay? Yeah. So on that was probably – my 23rd birthday, I want to say. Hmm. And my wife's cousin has season tickets to the Ravens. Yeah. So she ended up buying two tickets for us to go when New Orleans nice. came to play the Ravens. And I ended up sitting right in front of somebody, a couple, who retired and they took their whole 401k out and followed New Orleans Saints around the country. That really? Year. Wow. They went to every home and away game. Oh, that man. whole year, and they were the coolest people that I've so fucking cool. ever met. Like, wow, like, what, what's that? Uh, was that well, of course, back then the violence wasn't half as bad in Baltimore. You could go to like you know, Pratt oh, Street Ale House or something like that beforehand. You know, yep. now the violence in Baltimore is so bad. I would say, you know, that family they'd make it to you know, Raven <laughs> Stadium, then they leave out and someone would murder them and they want to go see that. the last of Baltimore. Season. I've heard they, it's violent. Baltimore, what is what it's that? not that bad. Don't let them fool you. <laughs> it's all about the news. It's not that bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just we kid, do just have, kidding. Don't go there. Yeah, well, I, I mean, that's the thing. Like Baltimore City, the, the thing is, is you know, a lot some people get murdered, but most of it's drug activity. Most no of biggie. It, no. Yeah, most of it is drug dealers killing other drug dealers. That's oh, what a lot of it is. Yeah. However, if you ever come to Baltimore, what 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 did they rename the squeegee? Kid? The, yeah. the nonchalantly. Some said, murdered. Some people get murdered, some but mostly. Get murdered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's. I mean, that's no the thing. We're from deal. Baltimore, so murders just like an everyday. Right. Forever, it just so. it just happens. It just yeah. happens. Yeah. And also, you're yeah. thinking about the squeegee workers. <laughs> yes, that, didn't they say on ninety? rock this week that they have a new name for them like aren't they like the troubled youth like window yeah, yeah. washing kids or there, something like that there like, is some fucking elaborate bullshit name yeah. for it but yeah yeah <laughs> it, it's, it's the it's these punk and wendy just in case you don't know around in baltimore various areas there's all these punk kids that stand around with a, a windex bottle and oh. a, a windshield wiper that like one of the, the squeegees yeah, and they they, st they steal them from the gas stations. Like yeah, okay. the ones they have at the gas stations, they steal right, them from there. Right. Yeah, right. they spray your window and wipe the windows. And we've had times more often than not where someone will be like, "No, I'm good." And they would get mad and hit their but car. Just, where there was a time oh. a lady pulled her gun out because they were like trying to. They put her in a headlock. And she oh. pulled the gun out and ended up firing the gun. It went through like the back of her seat or whatever. And it's oh, just wow. like, wow. But it's not bad because Crazy. in Baltimore, in Baltimore, some people get murdered, but it's mostly <laughs> well, for not the bad. most part. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Let's make a graph about it now. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah, I, just... I was born and raised in Baltimore, and I moved to Pennsylvania the day that my son was born. So, you know, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And here's what we're going to do now. We're going to get into our games. So we're going to start off with incoherent. So if you watched any of our episodes, you might be a little bit familiar with some of our games. So we're going to start off with incoherent. So incoherent, them. pretty much, I'm going to show you a series of cards. They're going to be in drunken lingo. You need to try to figure out what the cards say. Each okay. card has it has two hints on the back. So let me know if you need the hints. And uh, this is going to be the first card. So okay. what do you think 
this says right here. Let me get this on full screen once that pops around. So full screen. What do you think that says? Uh, stalking around town, something. One of the hints is high five. It won't really have you get it as much, but you know, let's say you know a guy and you guys are pretty close. It says a dangerous place filled with lunch dates from which few ever escape. I don't know. What do you think, Tom? I know normally sometimes you uh, pick up on these. I'm not sure what the beginning is, but I'm going to say stalking a friend zone. Stuck in the stuck friend zone. Stuck in the friend zone. Yeah, so stuck, stuck in, in the, the friend, friend zone. zone. Yeah, so that's okay. the first one. And then let me... Uh, Get the second one ready. So here we go. Here's that. And I will go ahead and screen share that. So this is the next one. So what do you think that says? And let me get that on full screen. So there we go. What do you think that says? And this is something you, you run into these a lot. Like, let's say you post something on TikTok or Facebook and someone just gets on to give you a hard time. Pretty much their online bully. Oh, internet trolls. Yes, yes, internet trolls. Yeah. And one of the other descriptions was the armpit of the World Wide Web. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, all right. So we're going to do one more and then uh, we'll move on to a different game. So let's go ahead and hit that out. Boom. I also like that I'm doing it this way that I can screen share this stuff. So it makes it a lot easier than me just holding a card up to the camera because everybody can kind of see what's going on a little bit better. So let me do that and uh, I will screen share that one. So what do you think that is? And pretty much it, it falls back into like Facebook stuff, but like some models become this, like they get like a sense of fame. They become this, like, you know, just based off of how many people they're, they're internet famous. Like people like a lot of their photos. Pretty much an internet famous millennial with millions of followers and a cute dog that has its own Insta account. Um, Insta. What do you think, Tom? You think you know what it is? Yep. What do you say? Instagram celebrity. Yes, it is Instagram celebrity. So that is uh, our incoherent segment. And of course, we haven't done what do you meme in a while. So what I'm going to do is I have a photo for what do you meme. And Wendy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a photo and we're all going to meme this photo. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. Let me go ahead. Boom, hit that screen share and here's this guy right here so we're going to go ahead and share that so this is the photo of course shout out to what do you mean it is a seal with his eyes closed for everybody listening at home it's a seal with his eyes closed and he looks like he's having a great time wendy <laughs> if you could meme this photo what do you what would you say oh goodness for this um, meme this photo just one more time please <laughs> <laughs> what about you tom <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't expecting Wendy's answer. <laughs> but <laughs> one's not enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go with like uh when you tell your mom the Sasquatch story and she finally hears the noise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with when you realize that they're that all the whales have been killed off and they're extinct and they will no longer throw you around like a rag doll <laughs> in the ocean. <laughs> Because whales are the bullies of the sea. So now what we're going to do is, Wendy, have you ever played Cards Against Humanity? No, but no. I All played right. something similar. But So I Cards Against Humanity is fun. We do a little bit differently on the game. Okay. Um, normally, you read off a Facebook card, and you have a set of cards, and you pick an answer. We That's a little bit hard to do on the show. So what we do is we read off the face card, and then you'll get to select a random number, which okay. will randomly answer that card. So okay. you get two options. If you don't like the first one, you can pick another one. So okay. the first one is, well, what do you have to say for yourself, Casey? This is the third time you've been sent to the principal's office for blank. And your random choices are numbers one through five. So what number sounds lucky to you that Let's you think? Could with three. 
three. All right, so we're going to pull three. So it says, well, what do you have to say for yourself, Casey? This is the third time you've been sent to the principal's office for acquiring a gun very easily. <laughs> Are you satisfied with that? Or do you want to choose another card? I want to choose another one. You want another one. All right. So yeah. three is out. That's so, a little flat. What, uh, what do you think? How about four? Four. All right. So we're going to do four. All right. So this one is, well, what do you have to say for yourself, Casey? This is the third time you've been sent to the principal's office for ripping into a man's chest and pulling out his still beating heart. <laughs> That's <laughs> better. It's got more teeth. Yeah. And of course, some of the other options that you could have had were hoop nugget, the game where you throw a nugget into a hoop, doing it doggy, no kissing, <laughs> yummy, 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 rat pussy. <laughs> that was one of the answers as well. And then we're going to do another round. So this round is, and his newest, most difficult stunt, David Blaine must escape from blank. So. Same thing. Five cards. What do you say? What number do you say? Two. Two? All right. So she's going to go. She's going to trust Tom Nutty. All right. I so will. two. And his newest, most difficult stunt, David Blaine must escape from square dancing with other racists. Do you like that card or do you want to pick another card? <laughs> I want to pick another one. Another one. All right. So what, what number do you say? Tom that led you to a very, very dark path with, with picking number two. So what, what do you say with that? I would say one. One. All right. So one. All right. So it is newest, most difficult stunt. David Blaine must escape from having 30 sons all with the same name, Chad. So he. Number two was a way better option. <laughs> and then some of the. <laughs> Some of the other options were a whole different way of talking called Spanish, a windmill full of corpses, and fetal alcohol syndrome. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Um, that would have been the winner. That would have yeah. been the winner. <laughs> and of course, that's our Ode to Humanity segment. Wendy, thank you for taking part in that. That kind of gets, that, that's when the wheels kind of fall off the <laughs> wagon a little bit. And, um, of course, what all what all do you have coming up? Of course, you know, you, you got your books out, yep. you know, you're doing all kinds of signings. Things are starting to get back to normal. I know right here in Maryland, we have a 3% infection rate for COVID. So like everybody's literally coughing in everybody's mouth right now. Cause you know, that's <laughs> because how only, only some people get murdered. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I feel like, um, I feel like March is going to be the month where a lot of this is just going to pass away. I re you know, seriously, yes. um, as far as COVID is concerned, um, things will get really back to normal. Um, I would like to do a couple of book signings at Barnes and Noble. But of course, um, a lot of the bookstores are not doing that now, but hopefully soon. Um, so I have an episode coming out tomorrow. Um, it's really cool. I should kind of connect you guys up with them. Um, they're called, uh, cans uh they're what they do is they are um airport mechanics and they work oh, really on, um yeah airplanes and helicopters and private oh, jets nice. and the name of their uh, podcast is i'm saying it wrong cans k c a n x maintenance crew or whatever but um they were really cool and um, nice. I actually just edited it uh, earlier today and i didn't and so it's going to be coming out tomorrow um nice. yeah great group of guys and uh, they're veterans and i love to support veterans and uh, I'm um, the same way. Um, my dad was in Vietnam. And of course, you said your dad was in Vietnam. What yes. uh, what years was he in Vietnam? He was in uh, 65 and through 66. Okay. Yeah. My dad was in 60, 68 and 69. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. And he, yeah, he came back not the same. Yeah. My dad was yeah. the same way. My dad yeah. uh, passed away in 2016. PTSD, oh, paranoid schizophrenia. He had a bad drinking oh. problem, you know. But, you know what? Yeah, so. my dad had PTSD as well, very bad. Um, he drank a lot, and I don't know, but um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was in Desert Storm. I was in the military a long really? time ago. Yeah, long uh, time ago. I don't. That's cool. What? Well, and, and you you don't you don't have to you don't have to bring it up. What What do you think is the craziest thing you've seen that you saw in Desert Storm when you were there? Um. Well, one of the craziest things I saw was like the first night we were there, a pit viper snake came in our tent and oh no yeah that was not 
really I, I hate snakes yeah i'm the <laughs> same way I, I'd rather... I was like and it was the first night and i like what are we in for you know because yeah. we were you know we weren't in any like brick or mortar type building we were in actual tents, tents in the sand you know for like eight months yep. um we jumped yep. around to different you know locations but yeah we were there um you know we had all set up and uh of course the girl um so it crawled under her duffel bag at night and of course it was the girl that was like the jokester she was always making jokes yeah so when she woke up she was like oh there's this there's a snake under my duffel bag there's a snake i'm like yeah right right no one believed her you know and uh so i looked under my cot and there was the markings of a you know some critter and i, and I followed it and i was like oh my god uh i think you know this could be true so we walked yeah. over there and she moved it and it, there it was coiled up same color as the sand uh, and i was like oh my god yeah yeah i i would i would deal with a wendigo or a bigfoot any day <laughs> than deal with that snake like oh. no absolutely not i hate snakes i hate spiders yeah like yeah. Yeah. No, no thank you and actually speaking of which since we're on facebook live our good friend sherry nelson she uh she commented in the live uh live stream she oh, said wendy I you look beautiful hi sherry and uh okay. yeah and she said ray you are hilarious miss you thank you sherry we appreciate that she's she's probably one of the nicest people i've ever met we told I her we love her i want i want her to come see me Hopefully oh yeah she will. Yeah. yeah, we we told her that we never had the Metallica whiskey before. So she actually ordered the Metallica whiskey and had it sent to us. And that was one of our oh, featured uh featured shots. So wonderful. Awesome, awesome person. And um it really is. You know, it, it it's like as I said, like with the writing and all that, like, you know, it takes time, you know. Oh, it, yeah. I mean, it, it's insane the amount of time. Like I thought with wrestling, dedicating the time that I did to wrestling, like, you know, I can't imagine you know, sitting in a room and trying to, you know, put stuff down for, you know, writing a book. And yeah, yeah. then, you know, you're like, oh no, this isn't going to work. Rip up the page. Like I would have so many balls of paper. I would go through so many notebooks. Like I would write one sentence with my five-year-old right. toddler handwriting and I'd just be like, no, do, you know, it's, well, you know, it's fun. <laughs> you, you, the, I love the, the creative process, the, like the stream of consciousness that just comes through. Uh, for some reason, it's always been easy for me to um, creatively come up with something. Um, the heart and I love it. You know, I just, you know, people are like, where do you get your ideas? I don't know. It's just very easy. <laughs> the hard part for me is putting it all together and yeah. going back through again and tightening it up and, you know, um, figuring out where it works and making the book flow where people will want to turn the page. And that's exactly what I wanted that to happen. You know, I wanted people, I didn't want it to be like a cheesy romance. I didn't want it to be just a normal, regular book. I really poured my heart and soul into it and yeah. I didn't conform it in any way. I wrote it my way. And yeah. I, I, you know, if people like it, they like it. And if they don't, they don't, yeah. it's going to be my book. And, um, yeah, I think I've achieved that. I've gotten a lot of great reviews and nice. I wasn't going to write any more than just one book. Um, it was just going to be a great resort. And another author friend of mine said, you know, this is going to be a series, right? <laughs> I go, oh gosh, that's a lot of work. And she's yes. like, uh, shout out to my friend, Laura Eckert. Um, she, she goes, it has to be a series. Is this, this is really cool. You have to do another one. Yeah. So, um, it's kind of funny. I didn't want to let her down. I'm like, okay. And she, I like a series. How many? She goes, stick with three, three. So, um, yep. So I came up with an awakening and I'm so glad I did. Um, I, that one is more of, so what's cool about it is I use people that I've known in real life and then I've made up some characters. So oh, there's nice. a couple in there that's really fun. Um, oh my God, this one couple that I wrote about, uh, her name's Cassie in the book. It's not a real name. She's yeah. passed on, but she was, oh my God, salt of the earth woman, just great loud boisterous she had like the white blonde beehive super red lipstick nice she would come to my parents parties she never wore blue jeans she had like this elegance about her and this resort that we had was a fishing resort right but yeah. she just she had these slacks on and this little cardigan and she had this little terrier in one hand and a drink in the other and loud and she'd tell these dirty jokes <laughs> she, uh, it sounds like somebody from hamden like we have the baltimore hunt Fest, and everybody was, dresses up like that like yeah that's <laughs> she was great so i thought you know what she's going to be a character in my book nice and uh yeah people love her and um yeah she's continued on in in, in awakening and yeah it's been really fun nice um, and, uh, 
of course, Wendy, where can uh, where can everybody find you? And, and I just I have to say, I, I grew up as I was growing up as a kid. My mom loved unicorns. And I saw your unicorn picture behind yeah. you. And that is the most badass unicorn photo I've ever seen with the wood. And it, like, th- yeah. did you actually have that like custom done? Like they actually custom like. Okay. So my that? friend, Katie, she has this wonderful shop. She makes this amazing artwork. Um, I can give you her info too. Um, okay. she, she uses a lot of all kinds of wood and metal. She is phenomenal. I love her. Nice. I love, I want to buy everything that she has. Um, yeah. Nice, I'm nice. Like, you know, as can... soon as I saw it, I, I'm like, oh, that's me. I gotta have yeah. that. <laughs> I would love to get like the podcast logo and something like that. The uh, the hang in the background. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. I can give you um her info for sure. Nice, um, nice. Yeah, and so... of course, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, but yeah, so um, you can find me on Wendy M Coke com. I'm on uh, Facebook, Wendy Coke spelled K O K. I'm on Instagram, Wendy Coke Four. I, um, you know, I have a uh, what podcast website, a juicy pair podcast.com. Um, I'm on Amazon, you know, I have an author page on there. I'm kind of really all over the place. Yeah. And, and of course, make sure you look up Wendy Cook because Wendy Coke is if you look up <laughs> cock on the internet, that's going to take you someplace. Cock, Coke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that, you know, going to send you to a very, very dark place on the internet and you know wendy we appreciate you coming on to the podcast you know yeah. I, we, we love talking to various different people you know and you know just like you know what you said with your books and all you know it's fun like you know i'm the type of person like if five people hear this or fifty thousand people hear this yeah. i'm doing this to have fun i'm doing this to keep myself entertained i'm a re- yep. i'm a retired pro wrestler of 20 years you know, I need to that's entertain amazing. in some way, shape, or form. So, you know, that's how this keeps on rolling. And of course, for everybody listening at home and everybody watching, we will be back again next week for everybody listening at home. For everybody watching at home, it will be next Friday. We will be back next Friday. And our very special guest will be the one and only Haley Reed. Haley Reed is an adult film star. So shout out to the Rub PR. She gets us hooked up with a lot of our adult film star guests. So make sure you check us out February 26th, next Friday at 8 p.m. right here on Facebook Live for that. And Haley Reed will be joining us. And of course, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you find us on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, wherever you find your podcast. You know, we have a couple of episodes up. We have the Happy Hour Podcast Roundtable, which is myself, three other pro wrestlers from the local area that's available now on YouTube. We have our fully fermented episodes, which has Eastern state, which includes myself, Tom nutty and um, Tommy Simbazo. And we also have our fully fermented redux episode in which Tom gets in to the whole thing of how he ran into the Yakuza at a karaoke bar. So make sure you check that out. And then of course it has our vintage content from happy hour TV, which features Sonny Sandoval from POD. That's all available exclusively on our YouTube and, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and end our Facebook live broadcast and um, we will see you guys next week.